it, when a woman is confident and powerful, they call her a witch. Few words provoke the same sense of unwarranted controversy as feminist. For many years, on-screen feminists have been dismissed. Uh, she's a cute little feminist, isn't she? <laughs> Mocked. It's over there. Every time you point, I see a penis. And outright vilified. That's right, you sad excuse of a man. You've been rendered completely helpless by a woman. If we look at film and TV feminists, past and present, we can spot some patterns in this character. She's intellectual, educated, and articulate. But I do wonder, as a third wave feminist, if it's even possible for women to reclaim their sexuality in this deeply entrenched patriarchal society. But her precise mind and sharp tongue have long been used against her, painted in many stories as a tendency to preach, overthink, and see issues that don't really exist. Take the word semester, okay? This is a perfect example of this school's discriminatory preference of semen to ovaries. That's why I'm petitioning to have next term be referred to as the winter ovester. She's passionate about her principles and non-mainstream interests. Hot tubs aren't really my thing. What is your thing, then? complex female characters. Yet her intensity of feeling has often led her to be interpreted as always angry or too much, a radical incapable of lighthearted fun. People perceive you as somewhat tempestuous. Heinous bitch is the term used most often. She's also often been portrayed as unfeminine, not a real woman. But what this actually reflects is that male validation isn't the primary metric by which he evaluates her life. Now there's a way to get a guy's attention, huh? My mission in life. Fundamentally, the feminist character is a skeptic who bravely questions established social conventions that others take for granted. I don't know why we bother with corsets. Men don't wear them and they look perfectly normal in their clothes. This woman with high standards wants more out of life than she was taught to expect. And crucially, she demands more for other women too. And they've got ambition and they've got talent as well as just beauty. And I'm so sick of people saying that, that love is just all a woman is fit for. Today's depictions of feminist characters increasingly reflect that this once dirty label is at last being widely claimed as aspirational, cool, even even necessary. Yet even this closer to universal embrace of the gender equality cause has brought new perils, like co-option, commodification, and fake feminists. Everyone loves a male feminist. It turns out the problem with feminism all along is it just wasn't men doing it. We're much less shrill. Here's our take on the feminist trope, its mythos, its journey from the margins to the mainstream, and why it's a no-brainer that we should all be feminists. And we're not me, Thomas Jefferson. <gasps> If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified about all of our new videos. This video is brought to you by Mubi, a curated streaming service showing exceptional films from around the globe. It's like your own personal film festival streaming anytime, anywhere. Feminism is simply believing women should have equal rights to those of men. Supporting this aim should sound like basic common sense in a country that's 50% female but has never seen a female president, where many states tax tampons but not Viagra, where women are paid less than men for the same work, and where all that American currency they should be making features only male faces. Who is this? Who is this? I want Susan B. Anthony coins. No! Yet the feminist trope has long existed in our cultural imagination, first and foremost, as a negative. Who little feminists are we? Real as a feminist can be. Godless and manless and ornery. Frequently, on-screen feminists are painted as overreacting to non-issues. That the sponge is gonna be dripping down my face? That's what you're imagining right now? Just a slow, wet drip? No. When you do that with your hands, I can feel them right on me. Many depictions reduce their concerns to silly trivialities. Men enjoy farts, so why shouldn't women enjoy their <laughs> We've written all about it in our new feminist book, Eat, Pray, Thus obscuring the very serious issues that the real feminist movement is concerned with. Statistically, two-thirds of girls experience unwanted sexual tension or contact in public spaces before the age of 21. Just as prevalent is the stereotype that feminists are unattractive and unwomanly. Feminists, intellectuals, 
ugly women. They're portrayed as bitter, jilted, essentially failed women who pretend to care about gender inequality as a consolation prize for not being popular with men. I'll buy some cookies, but not for Valentine's Day. Instead, these cookies celebrate the February 14th birthday of Anna Howard Shaw, famed American suffragette. The miniseries Mrs. America disproves this assumption by documenting how Ms. Magazine co-founder and feminist icon Gloria Steinem caused a furor in the 70s precisely because she didn't fit this stereotype. I don't want people listening to me just because I have a pretty face. I would love it if people listen to me because I have a pretty face. Everybody was so convinced that feminists could not possibly look okay because if you could get a man, why do you need equal pay? And her glamorous celebrity persona reframed decisions like not having kids as an actual choice, a valid one, instead of as evidence that one had not achieved womanly success. The rest of them I understand, but Gloria Steinem, she's so pretty. How could she not find a husband? Well, she doesn't want one. The most central presumption about feminists is that they hate men. This is Sharon. She, she's part of your mom's feminist group. She hates men, too. The feminist stereotypes over-the-top hatred of men is so insidious because it takes feminism's central issue of the patriarchal society, one where women are an oppressed class, and flips it to imply that men are the real victims. I'm proud of you. You know that, right? Even though you're a man, I can't change that. You can, actually. Many of these negative cliches are found in The Straw Feminist. This term describes a cardboard, exaggerated feminist character who's designed to undercut feminist ideology by framing it as a joke. I got a PhD from Berkeley in women's studies, emphasis in the history of combat. Or by suggesting feminism's gone too far. How about f rapists and dismantle the patriarchy? I mean, it's not all that catchy, though, is it? Mm. Okay, fair. How about stab all the jocks and watch them bleed. In 1964's Mary Poppins, Mrs. Banks advocating for women's suffrage is framed as frivolous fun. Mrs. Whitburn Allen chained herself to the wheel of the Prime Minister's carriage. You should have been there. While the movie even suggests that she's so busy congratulating herself, our daughters, daughters will adore us, that she neglects her own children. Where are the children? The children, madam, to be precise, are not here. They've disappeared again. Saved by the Bell frames neurotic Jessie's lecturing of her peers as annoying, or at best, a funny personality quirk. Sisters, don't sign up for the beauty pageant. Let Belding know we're united against him. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly, show some more enthusiasm. Jessie also dates the obnoxious, misogynistic Slater, and actually seems charmed by his macho posturing. Haven't you ever heard of the women's movement? Well, sure. Put on something cute and move it into the kitchen. So the show suggests the right man will cause a woman to quickly abandon her professed feminist ideals. I like it when you shake, Mama. <laughs> and I can't wait for the next earthquake. <laughs> When Jessie campaigns for a girl who wants to join the wrestling team, she backtracks after she starts to suspect the girl has a crush on Slater. Girls have absolutely no business wrestling, guys. The poor dears could get hurt. So in conclusion, keep your hands off our men, Christy. When she's not a laughingstock, I refuse to give Santa a Christmas list because I didn't want to depend on any man for anything. The straw feminist continues to be used as a darker cautionary tale of what happens when the ideology gets carried away. Survivors and allies only. Well, Tyler can be an ally, right Tyler? The idea that women are making a big deal out of nothing can be taken to a dark extreme in plots like the Veronica Mars storyline where a college feminist group fakes a rape to make a point, playing into the damaging myth that false accusations of sexual assault are commonplace. Fake a rape, right? Possibly a series of rapes. These anti-feminist biases even begin with our children's shows. Is Lil enjoying your mommy and daughter female empowerment class? Oh, it's a blast. Today we're doing tumbling, jumping, and a let's take control of the Senate sing-along. In true straw feminist fashion, Rugrats' mom, Betty, dominates her emasculated husband, Howard. Oh, Howard, you missed a spot over on the side there. Howard, keep scrubbing. Oh. In the Powerpuff Girls episode Equal Fights, when the feminist villain Femme Fatale plants seeds of doubt in the Powerpuff Girls' minds about how equal their society really is, You girls protect your city just as well as Batman and Superman protect theirs. 
But do you have your own movie? Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup lash out at males without justification. I finally caught up on all the housework, and all that's left is your room. If you could take care of that, please. But Femme Fatale's rallying cries are revealed to be little more than manipulative trickery. Sending me to jail will be a blow for all of womankind, including you. Significantly, the straw feminist is often contrasted with a more aspirational female protagonist we're supposed to relate to. We're given the message that it's cool to be an empowered woman like Legally Blonde's Elle Woods, who stands up to sexual harassment and sexist stereotyping, but is never explicitly aligned with feminism. Yet you don't want to be a whiny, uptight activist like Elle's fellow law school student Enid Wexler. The English language, it, it is all about subliminal dominance. These representations perpetuate a narrative of individualism, endorsing being your best self without connecting this to a broader push for equality. Ultimately, our culture devotes so much energy to smearing feminists because they pose a danger to the status quo. If feminists are seen as inherently unappealing, no one will want to be one. I've been reading Common Sense by Thomas Paine So men say that I'm intense or I'm insane Yet as Mrs. America's depiction of real-life militant anti-feminist Phyllis Schlafly reveals, distancing yourself from this movement will not protect you from the hard reality of deeply entrenched sexism. Our superiority in MIRVs does not compensate for the Russian superiority in ICBMs, SS9s. Hey, could you take notes for us? You know, so that we have an unofficial record. You should be careful dressing like that. And you should be careful perpetuating old-fashioned patriarchal ideology. After all these years of slandering the feminist, today's on-screen depictions increasingly reflect that our culture is in the midst of a feminist awakening. Maybe I'm a feminist. Modern stories introduce us to characters who aren't meant to represent feminism as a whole, but who see the world through this lens, or incorporate it into a multifaceted world outlook, thus making it feel accessible and normal. You look really pretty. And therefore I have value? No. No, that's not what I meant at all. I was just... I'm messing with you. Recent stories also increasingly show us why a feminist mindset is necessary. During Rape Prevention Week at school, all the signs are aimed at women. Girls, don't dress provocatively. Girls, don't walk alone. How about, hey guys, don't rape. As David Foster Wallace explored in his memorable analogy about fish who don't know they're swimming in water. And the two young fish swim on for a bit, and then eventually one of them looks over at the other and goes, what the hell is water? We often struggle to even wake up to the status quo. So these modern narratives illustrate how the process of becoming a feminist is learning to see the misogynistic water all around us. I'm here to learn how to avoid being raped. There must be some way. Because if there isn't, I don't know what kind of well, that would be. In I May Destroy You, the protagonist Arabella's two separate experiences with assault bring her to recognize just how essential a feminist awareness is, after she spent most of her life thinking it was enough to be a strong individual. Prior to being raped, I never took much notice of being a woman. I was busy being black and poor. Am I too late to serve this tribe? Old women. In Sex Education, a group of high school girls tasked with finding something that unites them come to the disturbing realization that what they have in common is sexual harassment. What binds you together? Other than non-consensual penises, miss. Not much. Feminists in period pieces can make these structures even more obvious, as we have the benefit of hindsight while we watch characters struggle to explain why they want more out of life to their confused peers. So, darling, why would you want to go to a real school? You're not a doctor's daughter. But nobody learns anything from a governess, apart from French and how to curtsy. What else do you need? In today's world, where everyday sexism is often more subtle than ever... So pretty. You should smile. It's especially important to have a language and a framework for confronting the hypocrisies that often go unchallenged in our society. Mansplaining is it's when, when a, man a man explains something to a woman that she already knows, but he acts like he's teaching her. Does that 
Makes sense. Most of all, we need feminism because it represents freedom. Once upon a time, my voice was stolen from me, and feminism helped me to get my voice back. In 1941, the psychologist William Moulton Marston invented the feminist icon Wonder Woman, the manifestation of a woman's sheer power. And I'm willing to fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. Frankly, Marston wrote, Wonder Woman is psychological propaganda for the new type of woman who should, I believe, rule the world. I am a goddess, a glorious female warrior. So what about the rest of us real women who fall somewhere between the straw feminists and Wonder Womans of the world? Today's woman may consider herself a bad feminist, a term coined by the writer Roxane Gay to describe a perceived clash between feminism's ideals and some of women's feelings or behaviors. There are many ways in which I'm doing feminism wrong. I watch The Bachelor and romantic comedies, and I have absurd fantasies about fairy tales coming true. The idea of the bad feminist rejects the false narrative that feminism means divorcing yourself from femininity. A tiara is a backward symbol of how women are only valued for their beauty, and now that I'm wearing one, I don't care. Or that it rigidly dictates you can no longer wear makeup and heels, listen to music with misogynistic lyrics, or obsess over guys. I have pole dancing class that day. We're about to freak out right now. We're about two seconds away from jumping up on this table and kicking everything in sight. Complex feminist characters on screen reflect that it can be complicated to reconcile our various principles and desires, which may sometimes be at odds. I'm not one to speak about feminism or empowerment. I am desperately in love with a man who will never love me back. I'm the one who needs to be empowered. Just look at Bojack Horseman's Diane, who despite being an avowed feminist, is best friends with a guy who embodies toxic masculinity. And I hate you, but you're my best friend, and you need me. Kat in 10 Things I Hate About You and Maeve in Sex Education both show aversion to traditional romance. You know in rom-coms when the guy finally realizes he's in love with a girl, and he turns up with a boombox outside a house, yeah, that makes me sick. But in the end, they're both totally charmed by their love interests' grand gestures, and that's okay. Often hewing too dogmatically to the role model or straw feminist pole is a sign that a character isn't being authentic. The bad feminist's story on screen is about letting go of rigid, preconceived notions about who you're supposed to be. My book is supposed to be a profound treatise on damage. And becoming an empowered, full human being through embracing one's own truths and incongruities. But I don't want to write a middle-grade fiction detective series. I think you do, though. Because when I was reading it, I could tell you were having fun. Ultimately, the only way to really be a bad feminist is by advocating disingenuously with ulterior motives. Wear this shirt and you won't even let me nut! Or by excluding perspectives from your definition of who deserves equal rights. The conversation keeps drifting toward race, and this group's more focused on women's issues. Representations of women's issues have long tended to focus narrowly on straight, middle-class, white feminism. Not while we're all living through the worst thing to ever happen to women in this country. But it's not the worst thing to ever happen in our history. What are you talking about? Because black women were slaves. Oh. Today's stories about feminism, especially those made by women of color, increasingly underscore the need for intersectionality, which takes into account the ways different forms of prejudice converge. African American girls are six times more likely to be suspended than white girls. That's probably a race and a gender problem. It's not just a race problem, it's not just a gender problem. Mrs. America explores how the feminist movement has frequently failed to do justice to LGBTQ rights. I am known to be violently opposed to the lesbian issue. And illustrates how, even when Ms. Magazine tries to be inclusive, its emphasis on female solidarity can lead to insensitivity and overlooking the complex experiences of women of color. I would like to explore the idea of tokenism in the workplace. One minority is propped up to cover the experience of an entire population. You're not saying you feel that way here. It's also only recently that some on-screen depictions are starting to center the experiences of trans women, who've historically been excluded from conversations about feminism. Everything I can't have in this world is because of that thing down there. 
you want to see who I am, that's the last place you should look. Another version of the truly bad feminist that's increasingly central in pop culture is the hypocritical or fake feminist, often embodied in the trope of the girl boss, who only really cares about furthering her personal brand. I'm doing this to make connections with real women and extend my personal brand as a real down-to-earth chica who cares about real women. The often white girl boss embodies a commercialization of feminism and a fundamental misunderstanding or misuse of feminist values. Monetizing feminism. Right? Yes, exactly. And women are made to feel so insecure, and then each insecurity is like a new opportunity to make more money. As writer Toni Morrison famously put it, if you are free, you need to free somebody else. If you have some power, then your job is to empower somebody else. This is not just a grab bag candy game. Part of Waham's mission statement is lifting up every woman, but can you really do that if the price point is so inaccessible? Feminism represents opening our eyes when we've been living with them shut. If you are not a feminist, male or female, you are looking at the world with one eye open. While it may feel easier to stay in the dark, I think some women like to blame sexism for their failures instead of admitting they didn't try hard enough. The feminist foresees the possibility of a better world. She reminds us that it's only once we let the light in that we get to enjoy the view. I think it's terrific that people make their own lives especially women. This is The Take. What do you want our take on next? This video is brought to you by Mubi, a streaming service we love. Every day, Mubi premieres a new film, whether it's a movie you've been dying to see or one you've never heard of before. There is always something new to discover. So in this world where it's very easy to spend hours debating what you should watch, Mubi is like having a really cool friend with amazing taste in movies, making it so much easier for you. They feature hard to come by masterpieces, indie festival darlings, influential art house and foreign films, lesser known films by your favorite famous directors, and more. Plus, you can even download the films to watch offline, and there are no ads, ever. Kicking off September is the exclusive online premiere of Isadora's Children. French auteur Damien Manivelle won Best Director at Locarno last year for this stunning tribute to legendary dancer Isadora Duncan. We can't recommend Mubi highly enough. You can try it out now for free for a whole month. Just click the link in the description below.